Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are drawing this beautiful leopard together and I will give you all the tips about how to draw a realistic leopard. Drawing realistic animals can be challenging sometimes, especially when it comes to the fur and whisker details. So I will show you all about it in a second. This leopard took seven hours. All my full-time tutorials are available on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Just like in being John Malkovich, you will be in my head and we will be drawing together. I don't like long intros, so I'm gonna cut it short, but I have to tell you this. Don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos. Let's draw our leopard. <laughs> Before we start, let me show you which materials I used in this drawing. My charcoal pencil is from Generals and I have Darwin's graphite pencils. I used 2H2B and HB. I have my eraser pencils right here and also I have a blending stamp and a Q-tip to blend and my erasers are a kneaded eraser and a black eraser. The first step is eyes. I did eyes with my colored pencils because I think colored pencils give a very realistic look. I didn't want them to be black and white, I just wanted them to have some depth. But I used seven colors here in small area, you can't believe it. I had three shades of brown, I had cream color as you can see I'm burnishing with my cream color here. I have pink, I have also green color and I use of course black. The reflections in the eyes are important. We should just leave them blank because we don't want any pigment to get in there. So around the eyes, I used charcoal pencil and I was super careful about it because charcoal dust can get into the colored pencils and because I used wax-based colored pencils, they might stick to it. So I was being very careful about not to smudge my charcoal pencil on the areas that I colored with colored pencils. For the nose, I used my graphite pencils mostly because I wanted to give depth to it. Because there were so many curvatures on the face area and I wanted to give those bending effect. So in order to give the 3D effect in the nose, I used darkest to lightest shading. Because there are so many gestures around this area and for these gestures, you have to really have some depth. And in order to create that depth, I use charcoal pencils and all three pencils that I have. If you ask me where I use my blending stump mostly, I use it just to blend over the lines with charcoal pencils. Because once you go over them with your blending stump, then they won't smudge much. Smudge much. That sounded weird. And here you can see that I also blended with a tissue and I went over again with my graphite pencils from darkest to lightest and then blend it again and I went back again. And of course, I used my charcoal block. Here you see me applying some charcoal on a different piece of paper. It's actually a watercolor paper. I'm gonna dip my number eight brush in and with that dust, and I'm going to go and add darker shadows with that. Because in the nose, these darkest shadow areas are very smooth. They have smooth transitions, so I just wanted to use my brush because of that. After that, I'm also using my Q-tip to go around those lines and my blending stump so that I am making the darkest areas even darker. I gave all the 3D effect on the nose, now I can move on to the ears. So for the ears, I applied a basic gray layer first and I blended it because the fur inside the ear is pretty white and in order to give that white fur effect, I need to have a darker base. After I created my darker base with my brush and with my charcoal and graphite pencils, as you can see, I'm going in with my eraser pencil and I'm adding all the fur details one by one. I'm doing the other ear as well. After this step, of course, I will go back in with my pencil and I'm going to add more fur details. For the mouth, I use graphite pencils over the teeth and the tongue. And for the darkest areas, I used my charcoal. I realized if I apply my charcoal like this with a perpendicular angle to my paper with my brush, I get really dark results and they are still smooth. I apply that technique to the tongue and for the rest of it, for the rest of the mouth, in the darkest areas, I use my charcoal pencil and sometimes my charcoal block, depending on how black it is. 
Around the mouth you can see there are some highlighted areas and of course I drew those lines with my eraser. For the teeth, I needed to do some shading because the teeth cast shadow on each other. I added with my graphite pencils all these shadows on the teeth area and in order to give highlights a better look, I used my eraser. And of course we shouldn't forget the teeth below. Here the most important thing is to catch the contrast. You compare, oh how dark is the tongue? Is it as dark as the rest of the mouth or is it lighter than the nose? You constantly compare these and that's how you decide on those values. After the mouth we are moving on to the spots which I was not looking forward to because I know it's going to take me forever but I wanted to give you the basics on how to do these spots the most realistic way. I'm using my charcoal pencil because this is a quite dark area and also I realize that as you go back in the backward part of our little leopard you see that it is much more blurry. So let me zoom in so I can show you something. Here, in order to give the spots a realistic effect, by following the direction of the hair growth, I'm adding just tiny little lines on both sides of these spots. Do you see? So these are the ones that actually give this fur effect. I couldn't really use my eraser, although I tried a little bit, because the charcoal really gets into your eraser and it leaves these gray stains that you don't really like. So one by one, I'm going in and I'm doing all these spots, as you see here, even closer. So some spots are smaller, some spots are bigger. You're just following your reference photo, whatever your reference photo tells you. In order to get these spots correctly, you have to have a really good sketch. In my sketch, in initial sketch, I had all these spots in already, so I knew exactly where they were. Of course, I missed a few, but then I was able to add them much more clearly because I had some reference points. So I am finishing the face almost, I'm ready. And you can see that I am constantly adding more details onto the ear and the back part of the leopard. Here I'm continuing to add all these spots. Did you see how I made it blurry in the background? Because that part was blurry on the photo. The best way to do these spots is after you create them with your charcoal pencil, you go over them with your blending stump first. And you go again with your brush this time and add all these shades, all these values. If you don't go with blending stump first, then you might smudge all that dust all over the place and that might not look very nice. Pows. So for the pows, I worked a lot. <laughs> so in order to make the pals realistic, you have to follow the same pattern all the time. So what I did is I went and blended first with my brush and then I also went in with my eraser as you can see here I created the fur effect with my eraser. After that I went in with my pencil, my 2B pencil and I added all these fur details with my pencil. I blended again. I went back in with my eraser again. Then I added additional fur with my pencil. I blended and I went back in with my eraser again. So I followed this cycle at least four or five times to get a realistic result on that pow. It took me a while, but this is a very important part because this part is the closest to the camera, closest to the weaver, so you have to be really careful about how realistic it is. So for the background, I use my charcoal block. I really like using dark backgrounds in these type of drawings because it brings the attention to the center of the drawing instead of other parts. So I use my soft charcoal block in the background. As you can see, I'm applying it. I'm actually applying a lot of pressure. And afterwards, by using my fingers only, I am just blending it all over. First, I wanted to create this effect, that kind of radiating light or radiating darkness in this case. But afterwards, I changed my mind. You will see as we go further, I made it completely black. And I think it turned out better that way. 
and the surface where our leopard is standing is kind of like a wooden surface so I made different kind of tones or values as you can see in the direction of the perspective. Now it's time to pay attention to the beard. The beard is right underneath the lower jaw. I added some base tone first with my number eight brush. And then I added some pencil strokes with my charcoal pencil. And there were some really short hair right around here on the jaw as well. So I added those as well. And as a final step, I went in with my eraser pencil and I added all those white hair. The white hair also goes into that black area. It is important to do that, not to stop exactly on the line because this gives a more natural look. Whiskers. So I did the whiskers with my white gel pen because it is very hard to do it with eraser. Eraser erases well, but then it kind of leaves a transparent line on these spots. So I didn't really like how it looked. I wanted a more opaque result. For that, I used my white gel pen and it was really, really wonderful to do that. Of course, sometimes the charcoal dust kind of sticks to your pen and the ink doesn't come out as much as you hope it would, like this one right now, but you can go again and then it's gonna look better. And you can always clean that charcoal on the pen by just applying this pen on a different paper and cleaning all the charcoal at the tip. I am adding all the whiskers one by one. There were some really giant ones. You have to be very careful about it because you cannot really erase them. Yes, you can go over them with your pencil, but you know, it's good to be careful from the beginning rather than trying to fix your mistakes later. I applied this white gel pen in the eyes as well. I think it made the reflections look much better. And I also applied it a little bit in the teeth area as well. We're almost ready. I am doing the last edits right now. I think it is important to do the last edits, basically making the darkest areas darker, giving some more highlights if you want to. If you see any kind of disproportions, you can always go and fix it, just like I'm fixing the tail right now. or you know, if the background is not black enough or the spots has some whites into it, you can always go back and fix those mistakes or you can make it even look better because the contrast you create will make your drawing look much more realistic. I hope you find this tutorial helpful guys and I will see you in my next video with another tutorial. Bye. Thanks for watching my video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And for my real-time narrated tutorials, visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Stay with art and love.